Providence is a two-star Michelin restaurant in the heart of Hollywood. There's only a couple of other restaurants in the city that has two Michelin stars. I started as the head pastry chef at Providence when I was 23 years old. In a tasting menu restaurant, everybody gets a dessert. So if you have 80 a day, you gotta have 80 desserts a day. We have to be very fast. There's only two of us in the morning to do prep, so we have to be efficient and ready to get to work. Hi, welcome to Providence. My name is Mac. I'm the pastry chef. Come on in. The menu that we serve here is a 10 course tasting menu. So as a pastry chef here, two of them are my responsibility. There's a lot to do. I gotta get started. Morning! Providence is a seafood restaurant that primarily focuses on wild-caught, sustainable seafood. That's the fish side. That's where all the fish, seafood dishes get worked on. And this is the meat side. I don't have to fight for space in the morning, but at night, it's a free-for-all. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. and the first thing I do is check the low boys and our uh, reach-in in the back. I'm looking for anything that's gone bad or I'm checking what we need to make today or get ready to make for tomorrow. This is a peach syrup that we use for the peach dessert. I'm gonna taste that to make sure it's okay. And there's dates on them, but you wanna confirm it by tasting it. Um, I have primu here that I know I made last week. And this side, we have a bunch of our bulky prep. I'm just checking for ice cream that I need to bring upstairs. So this is the Coco Husk Gelato. Now I've checked all our low boys and reach in. I'm gonna write the prep list. So for us at Providence, at least for the pastry department, we kind of break it down between like the desserts. We have a pre-dessert and the chocolate dessert and all the component that goes in that dessert. And if I need to make it, I'll write it down here where it says we need to make it. Or if I don't, we'll put a dash on it. We don't need to make it. So what I'll do now is put our initials in, in individual tasks so we both know where the day will lead us to. Do you want to make the mousse today? I take on the projects that take the longest amount of time to kind of know the ins and out of the recipes. Okay, that's it. I'll go change. Okay, see you in a bit, Naomi. Behind. Morning, Matt. Oh, the peaches came in. Are they good? Pretty much I start my day up here and I end my day up here. I'm gonna pack out the ice cream that needs to be used for service. The ice cream base that we make, we freeze them in these specialized beakers. This is a California Almond Survey for the peach dessert. Once they're pretty much rock solid, you put them in this container with a blade and the blade spins so fast that it creates a very smooth ice cream. Just delicious. We do it in the morning so that it has time to set for service. When I go up here, I paco, and then throughout the day, I'll be going up here. I'll check the ice cream and I'll bring it down when it's ready. This is where we dry age the fishes. We have two separate dry ager for seafood or fish, and then one for proteins like duck or meat. Anytime that I go up here, which is pretty much every morning, any tasks that are up here while I'm pacoing the ice cream, I will do. Today is Paul's birthday, one of our sous chefs, so we're making him a cake. Even though I am the pastry chef, I still make people's birthday cake. We make our own chocolate at Providence. This has been going for about three days. The Melanger really is designed to refine small batches of chocolate. This is actually one of our newest origin in Indonesia. This is a test batch to see if it's origin that we want to use. So this is a grindometer. We're going to put a little bit of chocolate up here and we're going to swipe it down. We're usually aiming for 10 to 15 microns and it's actually pretty there. That's where the chocolate starts mostly breaking up. This this is ready. We'll empty it later on when we finish downstairs. This is the half spear Hawaiian chocolate mousse. That's the base of the chocolate dessert. Usually the morning after we make them, whoever is up here, usually me, will unmold them. We make sure that we work really efficient. There's only four people in the pastry team and it's a lot of work really. So kind of want to make sure that you're working very efficient. This is lemon verbena patafui. In English, patafui means fruit dough. 
but really it's just jelly. Usually it's made with fruit, but here we have lemon verbena from the garden. I'll lay them out in a rack like this so the outside can desiccate a little bit. These we just got today. You never want to squeeze your peaches. It's going to bruise them. You're looking for around this area for it to not be green. When you smell it, it smells like a ripe peach. Next thing I need to do is get these peaches ready for the peach dessert. But before that, we got to grab some herbs in the garden. We're literally on the famous Melrose Avenue, smack dab in the middle of Hollywood. We also have our very own bee neighbors. I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> right now, the bees are very active. This is their time to collect pollen. So this is red shiso we're using for the peach dessert. This is what we poach the peaches with. This is white alyssum. We use it to garnish the peach dessert. We're going to pick it for service tonight. Speaking of bourbon, <laughs> we're in the middle of our vents. <laughs> but we do have like the lemon verbena out here. This we use for the pad of wheat that I cut. When I'm feeling like writer's block, I'm out here trying to figure out what dessert I should do next. It's very inspirational when you're out here. It's very peaceful. You get a lot of ideas. So now I have all the herbs I need. It's time to head back to the kitchen. So right now, the peaches are the best as they can be. It's very nostalgic to have a poached peach dessert. The peaches are cut in half. We'll finish it with Elysium flowers, top with the almond sorbet that we pocketed earlier. And then we make a syrup out of the poaching liquid that's poured table side. In the poaching liquid, we have water, sugar. I'm gonna add the sake. And then I'll add red shiso that we picked earlier. And then I'll finish it with a little bit of yuzu juice and I'll bring it up to a boil. I'm going to blanch the peaches. Before that, I'm going to score the peach with a razor. We've been doing this dessert, at least a version of it, for about three years now. We used to do it with Prosecco and lemon verbena, but upstairs we have a bunch of shiso, which really works well with sake. So that's why we're doing it. So it only takes a couple of seconds. Now I'm shocking the peaches so that they don't cook. You kind of just want to loosen the skin. See how it just kind of peels really nicely. We usually make about 80 peach desserts a day. I mean, at a tasting menu restaurant, you kind of have the advantage of knowing how many desserts you're going to do. But also in a tasting menu restaurant, everybody gets a dessert. So we brought the poaching liquid to a boil and now I'm going to add the peaches. And then we'll put a cartouche on. Such a big pot, so I'm going to put three. So the cartouche keeps the peaches submerged so they cook evenly. Also, sometimes the top part of the peach will pop out of the liquid and it'll turn brown, it'll oxidize. This is a French top. And if I move the pot towards the center, that is the hottest part. Now we just want to cook them very, very, very gently. So I'll pull probably half of it out of the French top itself. So that's just touching pretty much the outer part, which is the least hot. And we'll leave it there for 30 minutes. Now it's time to make the mousse. Let's go. The chocolate dessert, it starts with a half spear of chocolate mousse. We dip it in chocolate and toasted coconut. And then we'll top that with a long pepper and chocolate premier. Garnish it with a tempered chocolate and a cocoa husk gelato. And then we'll finish it with a long pepper and chocolate croissant. On the table, the servers will finish it with a coconut and fig leaf coulis. Chocolate dessert is the main dessert. We've been serving this dessert for about a month now, but even now we're thinking of the new dessert that we'll replace it with. I'm just gonna bloom the gelatin in the cold milk and let that soften. So I'm just lightly whipping the cream, getting it ready for the mousse. And this is about how far I'm gonna take it. Almost like ribbon stage. We're gonna make the ganache. A ganache really is just chocolate emulsified with usually cream or milk. So I'm warming the milk just to melt the gelatin and then I'll incorporate it into the chocolate. Whenever you're using the French top, it's just you're playing with the temperature. And I don't want it to boil, so I'm pulling it and then we'll incorporate it in the chocolate. Okay, that's the ganache. 
So right now it's a little separated, but that's okay because we're going to use an emulsion blender to bring it back together. This mousse is definitely very light, just perfect to end your meal because it's not a heavy chocolate dessert. This mousse is gonna set up fast, so I gotta run upstairs and put them in the mold. From my experience here at Providence, uh, in terms of our prep, we have to be very fast. There's a lot of multitasking happening. I just like getting things done. I don't want to let the station down. I was 23 when I got the pastry chef position here. It was a big surprise to me. <laughs> to me, it's very unusual. The level of trust that they have to give me, it's a lot of pressure, but I realize I like working here. I like doing what I do here. I like the people here. Moose are in the freezer, and now we're gonna shape the bread. This bread is our main bread for service. I'm going to start with the large bread for the bigger parties, which is 700 grams each. For the smaller parties, like from one or two, they'll get a 300 gram uh, sourdough. So we'll do 12 big loaves, and the rest of the dough will be small loaves. I like shaping the bread. I mean, everybody likes shaping the bread. So the sourdough that we make, it's made with a Tehachapi grain project, red fife and a bruzy rye. Their farming style is they don't water. They just let nature do the work. We work with the farmers, the suppliers, as long as I can remember. The relationship is definitely there. That just means we get really good product. These are gonna rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before we do the final shaping. There's like a feel good feeling when you come and eat and you have your own loaf of bread for some reason. So these are all done. It's time to get them in the fridge for tomorrow's service. Behind you. When the clock turns around 2.30, that's chocolate time for me. So this is where I play around with chocolate. This is where I'm most creative. We started with the idea of playing around with making bean to bar chocolate. Around the time when COVID started, it just made sense because we weren't really doing anything. I was at home, everybody was trying to figure out what to do. I was buying different origins, planning that when we reopen, that this might be something that we will be doing. I mean, I wasn't sure if I was gonna move on with this kind of project. So buying an expensive equ equipment wasn't really sustainable at that time. This is a champion juicer. It's a juicer for like vegetables or fruits or anything. But now nobody uses it because anything that goes through this tastes like chocolate. This contraption essentially separates the husk and the nib. When I drop a mixture of the nib and husk, the heavier nib will fall down here and the husk will go into the bin. This is a very manual process because you'll have to be there and drop the cacao slowly. So obviously the nibs get turned into chocolate, but then we have a bunch of this husk left over. What we do here is we steep it with fresh mint and we serve it as a cocoa mint tea with the petit fours. So here in the chocolate melters, we have our two main origins. This first one is from Ecuador. The estate is from Hacienda Victoria. We use for the sesame snack bars. These snack bars are part of our Mignardi service, Petty Four. They're sesame praline filling with an Ecuador single origin chocolate encasing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these, add the last layer of chocolate, and then we'll unmold them. I've never made chocolate until we started playing around here at Providence. Never, but it's always been in the back of my mind. That's one of the main reasons why I work here because I am able to do stuff like this. I can explore different branches of, of what I do. It's an environment where you just learn. There's no fear in, in coming here and kind of make mistakes, really. <laughs> Making chocolate, like what we're doing, bean to bar or bean to dessert. I mean, bean to bar is already like a very long process, but bean to dessert is, I think, extremely long process. It involves planning ahead every single day. This is sort of like a magical process because all you got to do is, and they all come out like that. This is very satisfying. 
So I'm gonna leave these in the chocolate box and one of the team members downstairs will grab them for service. It's 4.45, doors are gonna open in less than an hour. I'm going to explain the rest of the menu to the staff. But Max is gonna tell you about table 10. 10 tonight. Hi everyone. Uh, tonight the peaches we're serving are yellow peaches from Matsumoto Family Farms up in Fresno. The garnish we're using shiso blossoms. And then for table 10, we're serving a melon vacheran. The melons are from Wiser Family Farms with cantaloupe sorbet and just fresh cream on top of that. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you guys. This is what I was working on earlier. Hey. Everybody has a birthday. <laughs> Mac has to make like 70 cakes a year because we have about 70 employees and everybody has a birthday. So. Paul's nickname is the Panda. So we're getting ready to plate the free desserts for everyone tonight. Jin, right now, she's filling the patsy crate tarts with uh, salted caramel custard. She's gonna bake them in the oven, and then when they're ready and cooled, we'll finish them with a the bourbon vanilla cream. So when the desserts are fired, we usually get a ticket, and that's when we know to send out the desserts. The reservations are staggered, so that not all the desserts are sent out at the same time. Guests are starting to come. It's getting really busy out here. You guys have gotta go, bye. Out.